on this week's episode of why I chose Williams, how I chose Williams, my college admissions process, my stats, and etc. I'm Sophia. I'm an incoming senior at Williams College and I get a lot of questions about college, me, and Williams. So if you'd like to know how I ended up choosing to go to school in the middle of nowhere, let's get started. Please like this video and subscribe. I read every single comment on my videos and it would mean the world to me if you just left a comment about maybe your thoughts, any questions you had, any videos you'd like to see. I will be waiting. I am going to be in Korea for the next few months and I will be filming some more content there. So uh, stay tuned for that. What type of students do you think Williams College is looking for? I think Williams is looking for students that are curious. They let their curiosities guide them. They're passionate about their interests and they're open and willing to learn and connect with other people and their ideas. I think students at Williams aren't really as competitive as students from other schools. We don't even talk about grades. A lot of forums seem to say that Williams is filled with quirky, outdoorsy, intellectually curious people. And I would say that that's pretty true. I'm not really the outdoorsy type, but I'm still here. So, I mean, you don't have to be like one or the other and you can still see yourself at Williams. Campus culture is really different from college to college. It's important to visit the school and to see for yourself what the people and the community and the school campus vibes are like. You can see how you fit within that environment. Colleges are looking for a balance of different kinds of people and these are the ways that colleges can be not diverse and inclusive. Specifically talking about race and in terms of black and POC populations at Williams compared to other schools, I think we're doing decently okay, but there's still a lot of work and a lot of nuance in this conversation left to do. This is why it's really important to ask by POC students and students of marginalized identities what their experiences are like at their schools. And I would refer to Black at Williams for what it's like to be black at Williams and dear PWI for what it's like to be a minoritized identity at a predominantly white institution. Did you apply for early decision or regular decision? Did you apply to a lot of schools? Was it difficult to get in? I applied to 30 plus schools thanks to Scripps College Academy and QuestBridge. QuestBridge is a program for high achieving seniors from low income backgrounds and honestly it sort of saved my life. So as a senior in high school you apply to QuestBridge and then if you get chosen as a finalist you can apply for the match and when you rank your schools in the national match and you get accepted at one of these places you essentially get a full ride for four years at the partner school. I applied to QuestBridge, I became a finalist. My match list was pretty short. I think I was really scared of going to a college that I really wasn't sure about. So I only ranked one or two schools, USC and UPenn, and I was interested in the entertainment industry. I really wanted to go to college in the city and look where I ended up. Number one regret for me is not putting non-binding schools on my list and also just making my list really short because that didn't really do much for me. I mean, it took me to Williams. So no surprise there, I didn't really match with either school and I moved on to QuestBridge Regular Decision. QuestBridge Regular Decision is when you use your QuestBridge app to apply, but you write a bit more supplementals for the specific college that you're applying for. SCA or Scripps College Academy is another program that I was in in high school. It's a multi-year program for low-income, high-achieving students that are female identifying. They helped me a lot with the college admissions process as well too. I had a mentor. They also provided me fee waivers throughout the college admissions process. And that's how I was able to apply to college without paying any application fees. Do you know how much numbers matter in the application process? I wasn't a perfect student. I went to a Title I under-resourced school. I was third in my graduating class and I took 11 out of 13 or 14 APs that were offered at my school. I wasn't a straight-A student. I didn't win any crazy awards, didn't do any life-changing stuff like make it to Mars or something. So I don't think that they're looking for perfect people. Just make sure that you're genuine on your college apps about what your interests are and what your passions are. What did you write about in your Williams essay and did you get a high score on the SAT. In my general essay, I wrote about phone banking. In my Williams essay, I wrote about Trevor Noah. He is my favorite person in this world and I'm a huge fan. I want to meet him someday. <laughs> so I didn't take the SAT, but I took the ACT and got a 33. Oh, and I also took some SAT subject tests and I'll list the ones that I took here. 
what extracurriculars did you participate in in high school? So I'll make sure to list out the extracurriculars that I was in here. How did you hear about Williams? So I had actually never heard of Williams until Questbridge and it was the last school on the Questbridge websites. Having to go on to regular decision, I was like, ah, oh, Williams, eh, might as well put it in. Okay, so this is the juicy stuff that you were here for, why I chose Williams. So acceptance season rolled around and I was like, let me just see what schools want me, you know, like, and these are some of the colleges that I got into. I was blessed with a lot of choices and I was like, yeah. And out of the schools that accepted me, Williams and Bowdoin let me know that they can fly me out for free during previews and admissions weekend. And I was like, for free. So before visiting, I had no intentions of attending Williams, not even a single bit. While I knew that LACs or liberal arts colleges like Williams and Bowdoin were great schools, I was really set on going to a school that was pre-professional. USC and UPenn are pre-professional schools where you go for like a communications degree to major in something else. You'd have to switch out and it's like a whole process, but liberal arts colleges give degrees that aren't really focused on a certain career. So it's a very different experience to go to a liberal arts college versus a pre-professional college or university or even a research university. So we're going to talk about my trips to Bowdoin and Williams. So I never did a follow-up video explaining what my experience is like and someone asked me how did I choose Williams over Bowdoin. So I visited Bowdoin first. I had a lot of expectations for Bowdoin. They said I was going to be greeted with the Bowdoin hello, you know, everyone was going to be like hi hi hi. I was just excited. I was expecting like a lot of community. And then I got there and I was like hmm, inch resting and it was freaking cold. I was like, mm, okay, well, I can let this slide, you know? It's just how Maine is. The people there were pretty nice. The college was pretty nice. I had a decent financial aid package. And that feeling really wasn't clear until I visited Williams. Before I talk about what my visit was like at Williams, I have to tell you about this conspiracy theory that Williams students have. So from like November to like March, the weather in Williamstown is absolutely cold, rainy, snowy, slushy, and it's like that for like five months. And then every year, somehow, Williams is connected with the weather channel or like the weather gods, but like previous weekend is like sunny. The trees are like in full bloom, flowers everywhere. Everyone's out and about, they're just like, it's honestly sometimes a little too good to be true. Going back to what my visit was like at Williams, the weather was actually pretty good. My host was a little busy and she let me know and I didn't really see her much. So instead, her roommate and her friends showed me around, ate with me because I was going to be a little lonely pre frosh and I was like... They took a genuine interest in me, helped me with any questions I had about like Williams. And mind you, this was all when they were busy with like assignments, midterm season probably. They gave me their time and their attention and I was like, I'm just a weak person for people who give their quality time to me, you know? It's hard to come by. It's hard to come by these days. This was during a moment when I was like indecisive as they were honest and upfront about Williams. They didn't really try to like oversell Williams to me. And one thing that I took note of when I was observing how people on campus interacted with one another, I just got this feeling that everyone was like really friendly. They would say hi, passing by. You know that little, the little nod that you do that you're just like, I'll see you. Whenever my host's friends or her roommate would walk around with me and they would see their friends or someone that they knew, they'd just be like, hello, and then they strike up a conversation. Even if I was there, I didn't feel invisible. Like the other person would ask me for my name and then like my host friend would be like, oh, she's Sophia, she's a pre-frosh. And I was like, I vibe with this. I've always been invisible. No one wants to see me kind of thing. So, you know, like, I love to be seen. They just ask other students for their honest experiences about Williams and people were willing to give them and, I, and just take time out of their day. And I was like, y'all don't have classes to attend or better things to do than to talk to a pre -frosh. But People were like genuinely excited and they're like, like, we will tell you things about Williams, whether they're good or bad. I think that was like the moment where I was like, 
I could just tell that people really cared about each other here. And this is the perfect transition into what made you want to move from LA to Williams College. Okay, first, I visited my main options and they were all sort of in the city. UCLA, which is a really good option because I got into their Regents program, which meant a full ride. USC during their admissions weekend, which I mostly missed because I sort of slept in. And both were okay. I wasn't like extremely wild or anything. They were cool schools. Like It's the same thing I felt about Bowdoin, but I didn't really get that sense of belonging or feeling like I could see myself here. And I think the people and the community at these schools really mattered to me a lot more than I thought it did. One special note to make is that Williams takes really good care of prospective and first year students. Heck, I was even picked up by two people from the admissions office at a random train station in western massachusetts like i was the only one like they they drove out just for me i mean it was like probably like an hour or so access to williams is pretty hard without a car or a bus so i understand but i think it's important to say that the experience for prospective and first year students are definitely different from current students i, I think that's just how it is for a lot of different schools so i said that i was a questbridge finalist didn't i not my financial aid package for williams is pretty good I'm getting mostly a full ride. But I think financial aid is really a case-by-case -case thing. It's a personal, financial circumstance. Everything is done on a case-by-case -case basis. I asked myself this one question. Where would I regret not attending? And I was down to Williams and USC because I just couldn't let USC go, I don't know why. I was like, can I pursue my dreams of going into the entertainment industry? In my mind, I still sort of have those dreams, gotta be honest. I am living out my dream being a potential YouTube star, so maybe this was where I was meant to be. And even when I was deciding, I was doing the coin trick and I went on every forum on the internet and I was like, how do I make a really hard decision? I think the last straw was me calling USC up and being like, can you reconsider my financial aid package? I am poor. And USC was like, we will have to get back to you. And that's when I knew. I didn't want to go to a school that didn't really care about me. So I decided on Williams. I hope you enjoyed this little story time. I try to make it as exciting and more entertaining as possible. I had to vibe it up a little bit you know i'll see you guys in the next one